What's up everybody, if you're buying a HUD home, you gotta check out this video. What's happening, Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, real estate brokers, and real estate investors grow their businesses with a path toward financial freedom. Today we're talking about HUD foreclosures. Look, I've been in real estate since 2002 and have done a good amount of HUD and foreclosure deals. But as a real estate agent or a buyer of a HUD deal, you need to know what exactly you're signing off on. Before we jump into it, I want to explain exactly what a HUD foreclosure is. A HUD home is a home in which the owner had an FHA insured mortgage but was unable to make the mortgage payment and went through the foreclosure. If a borrower defaults on an FHA loan, the Federal Housing Administration pays the lender the balance on the loan and takes possession of the property. Buyers and their real estate agents must submit their bid online at HUDHomestore.com. Also, keep in mind that HUD usually only allows owner occupants to have basically first right of refusal for the first 15 days of being on the market. So anybody within the first 15 days has to have the intention of buying the home to live in it. If you are an investor, I suggest you keep a keen eye on those properties if they do go off the market because many times these HUD homes have been neglected and uh, just overall in bad shape. So as an investor, you want to see if those properties come back to market because a lot of times owner occupants after their inspection period, they just decide that the property ha has too, too many issues and too much damages and it's, it's going to cost too much money to bring that property up to par. So as an investor, you always want to keep that property uh, uh, in your sights to ensure that if it does come back to market, um, it's surely going to lapse that 15 days so you can go ahead and make an offer on it. Now a big thing when you're buying a HUD home is many times they do not have the utilities on in the property. So what that means is if you do go into contract, you as the buyer are responsible for turning the utilities on. And there's actually an approval process that you have to apply for uh, in order to turn the utilities on and there's no guarantee that you're actually allowed to have the utilities turned on. In many cases that we've seen, they do allow the utilities to be turned on, but uh, also keep in mind they have strict guidelines in terms of how long they can be turned on. Usually it's three day increments. And with that said, if you are getting financing, you probably want to line up your home inspection as well as your appraiser uh, roughly at the same time or within that three day window when you do have the utilities turned on. This way you don't have to go back through the approval process for utilities. All right, so we're gonna jump over to my computer here and I'm gonna show you a real deal that we're working on right now on an actual HUD contract. So if you look, um, I just highlighted some areas of concern that you do wanna speak with your buyer if you're working with a buyer or if you are the buyer, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to some of these uh, highlighted items that I have here. Um, including conditions of sale, all assessments, including improvement assess assessments, which are available for payment without interest or penalty for advance payment, taxes, rent, and ground rent, if any, shall be prorated at the time of closing. Um, basically, that means any special assessments as well, the new buyer is going to be responsible for. So even if you write up your offer, your contract, and you state that you want the seller to pay the assessments, let's say there's a special assessments for some of the roads and uh, there's a balance of a few thousand dollars against your property, um, it's gonna be prorated at closing per the conditions of this agreement and uh, you're gonna be responsible for taking on those uh, assessments uh, at the time of closing. Uh, if you scroll down here, seller may rescind this contract and return all or a portion of purchases earnest money deposit under the following conditions. Uh, number one, number two, number three is uh, what I wanted to point out. Number three says seller determines that purchaser is not an acceptable borrower. Now, in my estimation, that's very vague. Um, I can see where they're going with this. If you're not an acceptable borrower, meaning if you're trying to obtain financing, uh, maybe you're having difficulties getting financing, but the language in this is very, very vague. So uh, basically the seller the HUD is leaving it open that they can rescind, rescind the contract if the seller determines that the purchaser is not an acceptable borrower. What an acceptable borrower is, is basically up to their discretion. So it's something you do want to pay attention to. The next one for investors, as mentioned, there's going to be a 15 day window for owner occupants of the property. Now, if an investor investor does purchase it, the owner occupants have uh, their due diligence, their, their inspection period, 
um, to go ahead and inspect to see if the property has any issues that they're not comfortable with and, and can uh, basically back out of the contract if it's going to cost too much money or the, the repairs are too much. But for the investors, if you read this, please note the 15 day inspection period applies to owner occupant purchase, purchasers only. Investors may inspect the property but will forfeit the entire earnest money deposit regardless of the inspection results. I'm going to read that again. Investors may inspect the property but will forfeit the entire earnest, earnest money deposit regardless of the inspection results. So basically that's saying, yeah, you can go ahead and inspect this property as an investor um, and you, you find that you know there's a lot more money, a lot more work that has to go into this property. Uh, if you do back out, your escrow is in jeopardy. You don't have that traditional um, walk away period uh, per, per the uh, standard, standard contracts. In Florida, uh, we have the far bar contract, which allows you to actually input how many days that you want to inspect. And you can essentially, per that contract, back out for any reason. Um, if it is 15 days, you have 15 days to inspect and you really don't even need a reason to back out and get your earnest money back. So HUD saying if you are an, um, an investor that yeah, you can go ahead and do your inspection, but your, your escrow is in jeopardy. All right. The next part, the earnest money deposits will be returned to the owner occupant purchasers only if HUD concurs with the home inspection report findings. Okay, so this is very important as well. Even if you're an owner occupant um, and you're buying this property, HUD still has to agree with why you're actually being released from this contract. So if, if you find that the property just has maybe too many minor issues that are gonna add up to be a big deal, um, or maybe it's a big, some, some big ticket item, HUD it really is saying in this, in this language that it's up to their discretion to really just go ahead and say, um, you know, we don't, we don't agree with you. We don't agree with that inspection report and uh, we're still going to hold you to the terms of the contract. Um, if buyer chooses to cancel the sales contract due to the inspection or other test report, the buyer must submit the cancellation within 15 days of the uh, date executed by the asset manager and then it's going to go into review they're going to review the uh, the report um, make sure you are getting a home inspection because they're going to want to see that documentation backed up for why you would back out of this contract all right and the next thing is appraised value in the state of florida we do have an addendum to the contract um, that is an appraisal addendum so if you're financing or, or even if you're paying cash if you go ahead and pay for an appraisal and it comes in short uh, you have the opportunity to back out of that contract assuming the seller agrees to it and signs off on it per the HUD contract it says I we understand that if our effort exceeds the appraised value and the property is being purchased with FHA conventional financing I we will be responsible for the difference in cash so if the property, um, if you're in contract for um, $250,000 and it appraises for $240,000, that means you have a difference of $10,000 per this contract. You're obligated to go ahead and come up with the difference in cash. Um, and again, if you revert back to that language that I put in there saying that the borrower or HUD, uh, it's at the discretion of HUD to see if you're an acceptable borrower or not, this could be one of the ways where they say, you know what, they didn't appraise and we're still gonna go after your escrow because you agree that if the appraisal comes in short, you're gonna pay the difference in cash. You're saying you can't pay the difference in cash, but you signed off on this documentation, we can still go after your escrow. Uh, and the last thing that I wanna talk about in this is Owner occupant, be sure that if you are bidding on a HUD home, you are paying close attention to this because if they find out that you're buying this property and you're an investor or you're not abiding by these timelines, then uh, you, you could get into some serious trouble. Uh, it states, as an owner occupant purchaser, I certify that I have not purchased a HUD owned property within the past 24 months as an owner occupant. This offer is being submitted with the representation that I will occupy the property as my or our primary residence for the last 12 months. So 
that's extremely important. You don't want to go into this and try to do a quick flip on the property. HUD finds out and you, you could have a lawsuit against you. So uh, just be sure that if you are, you are buying as an owner occupant, that you are uh, abiding by these, these terms in this contract. Um, look, I'm not trying to talk you out of buying a HUD home in any sense. And if you're a real estate agent, um, I, I encourage you guys to go ahead and review this contract very closely with, with your clients so they know what they're up against. Um, things aren't bad until they are. And uh, last thing you wanna do is um, you know, have them come back and, and go after their escrow and they're like, you know, why, why did this happen? You didn't tell us and so forth. So you really wanna have them review this, review it with an attorney. Um, also, odds are if an attorney or anybody marks this contract up, the HUD contract, HUD's, you know, the asset manager is going to kick it back. They're, in many cases, this is written by their attorney. So any alterations to this contract, HUD's not going to accept. So I wouldn't even bother trying it. It's one of those risks that you take. And that's how I would explain it to any buyer. Uh, if I'm a real estate agent is there is a risk associated with buying a HUD home. In general, there's a risk with buying a piece of real estate in general anyway. Um, but you want to make sure that they they do and they understand what exactly they're signing off and encourage them to read through this contract. Um, as you can see too, this, this entire contract's 28 pages. Um, so th there is a lot of reading to do, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, again, I'm not trying to talk you out of a HUD deal. Um, you can, in many cases, get a, a undervalued price property. This one that we're in contract um is i'd say undervalued by in terms of contract to what it's worth by probably close to 20 percent so there's about 20 percent equity in this deal um so again it's risk and reward and uh you know if you're buying real estate or your real estate in, uh, agent you just want to thoroughly go through this and um, talk about the risk and reward associated with buying a hud home if you do like foreclosures, check out this next video I have on uh, listing foreclosure properties and I'll see you over there. Thanks a lot.